Thanks so much, Keith. We're super excited to be here on the next right thing for this Friday because tomorrow, Adam, we're going to be in Dallas and we're super um, thrilled about that to do that live broadcast for Guadalupe Radio Network and have the, the audience there so we can ask questions. And Adam, it kind of leads me into why uh, I I was thinking to bring this up with you because I've been keeping um, tabs on it to find out where what, what's happening with these shows that are on uh, streaming platforms and, and cable networks. You know me, Adam, I like to channel surf. And so I've been keeping an eye on these things and it brings up what, what we um, uncovered Oh, wow. Like in 2022 about that little demon, that little demon series on uh, that was created um, uh, by FX, which is part of Disney um, with Danny DeVito and and his daughter playing the parts of that animated adult um, series there. And then some other paranormal uh, shows and ghost hunting shows. We've been keeping track of of things just to see where they're going, if they're gaining, you know, uh, popularity and stuff like that. So anyway, back to this little demon series, it it has been let go from many streaming platforms. They're trying to say it had decent viewership. There was a lot of pushback from Christian organizations. Um, we did a whole show on, I think we did two shows on it, um, trying to get the word out that this is dangerous. This is not a cartoon for kids. This is very dangerous. It normalizes demonic uh, demons and demonic activity. And it makes it seem, and you and, and it actually fosters sympathy for these characters. And um, so now, as of April 2024, which is this, this month, um, apparently this little demon series is still in limbo, but they're trying to get it circulated again. So they're trying to repackage it and everything. A lot of star power is behind all these, uh, paranormal, uh, shows. Um, so a lot of celebrities that we know that we've seen in other comedies and other movies. So we feel like we've known, we know them, right. And we understand who they are as, as actors and actresses. Okay. So I want to get back to this because I think it's very important and it kind of leads into what we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, more tomorrow when we're together in Dallas. But Adam, um, this is dangerous. <laughs> and I applaud everybody that did things small in small ways just by getting the word out or in big ways by signing petitions. I think we did our part doing the spirit world on this to try and get raise awareness to say, hey, don't let your kids watch this. I know that uh, um, Congressman um, Mike Johnson, he he put out a big um, um, last uh, or a year and a half ago, a big article uh, uh, alerting parents to keep their kids away from it, to guard them from it. This is terrible. So a lot of people stepped up and really tried to to push back on this. What do we do, Adam? I mean, this is getting this is getting worse by the second. It is really addicting. It's adrenaline rushing. A lot of couples think this is normal entertainment, and oh, it's no big deal. What do you say to all of it? And I think you, you're, you're even going to share some examples of how this is very, very extremely dangerous. Yeah, so there's kind of two categories there that, that you mentioned that are important. And that is the, the kind of cartoons and, and um, fiction-based material that has a very strange theology behind it. It's not really spelled out, but it's you can see it there. And it's teaching kids that the devil is a sympathetic figure, that he's funny and charming, that he's really not all that bad and maybe misunderstood. So it has some very different theology, but it's still using the symbol of the devil. Those we need to have an open um, democratic discussion where everybody's voices can be heard. The internet gives us that ability more and more where parents can speak their mind about these things. Young adults can, everybody can. So I think we need to speak up when we see something that we think is harmful and that society doesn't want in society. If the majority of people don't want it, we should speak up and that should work itself out and it, sh it will be naturally removed because the majority of people don't want it. The other aspect you're, you're referencing is the paranormal TV shows, which are kind of the ghost hunting shows. I have so much to say on that. Um, the paranormal world, the ghost hunting world, was just getting started when I was getting started 
in this world of of uh, moving into the world of exorcisms and you know uh, I was I had the question in those early years of, of whether this was mental illness or a misunderstanding or whether it was a real spiritual problem turns out it's a real spiritual problem of course but in those early years Deb about um, maybe a fifth to a quarter in some years a third of all the cases we got were ghost hunters paranormal investigators and the reason is is because you are inviting random spirits to manifest to you and interact with you so you're making an explicit invitation for something to interact with you some people even in, invite them to use part of their body like with the ouija board where the permission that you're giving is to to use your arm or your hand also necromancy is forbidden by god in the bible in the strongest possible terms and necromancy is calling up the dead to talk to them now that's different than a poor soul appearing that God sends you're not asking for them and they only ask for prayer they don't tell you details of their life or where the hidden treasures buried or anything silly like that so paranormal investigating is a big problem Deb because it makes it seem like it's fun and harmless and it's a neat pastime and it gives people a spiritual experience which they're hungering for and most people are not religious in the traditional sense or going to church and so they're looking for a spiritual experience, and it promises to give that. Well, Adam, that's interesting. You you bring that up. So they're looking for their thir they're 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 thirsting for this spiritual encounter, and then also the adrenaline rush that comes with that too, right? When there's something that's very very exciting that you're you're looking at or you're participating in. But I know a couple, um, young couple. They're married. I know them, and they are actually. Uh, pretty religious, um, if, you know, from what I, what I can tell and what I know about them. And yet they're part of a group, um, young couples, married. They're getting ready to start a family, um, God willing. And um, they're part of a group that they not only view uh, ghost hunting shows, but they go out on these, you know, Ex expeditions, if you want to call them that, or what, however you want to, you know, where you're trying an adventure or whatever. And then they go to these mock dinners and all sorts of things that have that theme. I mean, Adam, this is there's, and I asked them, I, I straight, I, straight up, I said, listen, can I ask you, what are you gaining from this? Mm -hmm. And they said, it's super exciting. We look forward to, to going out with these other couples. This is exciting. We can't get enough of it. Right. That's what they said to me. And that just, I was like, really? You, you, why would you do this when you know there's such, there's so many problems associated with it? And, and, and the, hu the, the husband, the young, the young man, he said to me, but Debbie, how do you know that? How do you know there's problems uh, associated with it? And that, that was a key, that was a key question he asked. And I'd like you to answer because you're in that world where you're dealing with the results of some of these things. Right. So there's one way to answer that question. And here it is pretty briefly. We need to think through what are we interacting with? Let's say something did happen. What are the possi possibilities? What, what could that thing be that just spoke on that recording or moved that object um, that we don't think was the wind? Well, is it a saint in heaven? Would a saint in heaven draw you into a sin that the Bible calls a, an abomination before God, that he'll turn his face away from you and cut you off from his people if you do it, which is how necromancy is described? No, a saint's not going to draw you into sin. Is it a soul in purgatory that's working to make it to heaven that God somehow would allow to leave purgatory and come and draw you into a sin that's violating the first commandment also, by the way, because you're turning to created spirit for your comfort and spiritual information. So would that happen? No. Would a holy angel come and draw you into a sin that's going to be a mortal sin in violation of the first commandment? No. So all we have left are demons. Do the demons have information about the nickname your grandmother called you when you were little that nobody else knows? Yeah, they probably do, because their job is to tempt us, and so they're around us our whole lives. So, and I say this not as an armchair, um, kind of theorizing about this from an armchair perspective, you know, an armchair quarterback. I've seen myriad cases with this, and maybe after the break I can tell you one of the more extreme stories that I saw that came out of Paranormal Investigating. 
Oh, I would love for you to share it with all of us and, and the details of that, because I think that can be important um, on how we're talking to these young folks. But just just to let you know, this this couple that I'm that I'm talking about, um, they they don't they, they're not looking to. Uh, how do I say this? Develop a relationship with with the uh, the evil side of things. It's really entertainment for them. And they kept stressing that it's entertainment. So keep that in mind when you answer some of this on, on the other side of the break. Um, but for now, we're going to send it back to Keith. We're going to be discussing this a lot tomorrow as well when we're in Dallas, um, because I think this is, you know, we're just facing it. This is everywhere on TV. Anytime we turn on the television or go on to cable or or any even even on just the Internet, it's there. It's right in our faces. In fact, I, I tell you, I tell Adam pretty much every week, you're not going to believe this six and seven pop up, at, you know, advertisements for all and trailers for all these new episodes coming out. It all has a demonic theme. Every one of them or go or ghost hunting or paranormal or something of that nature or the the psychic mediums and all this kind of stuff is 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 all resurfacing and it's time for us to really I agree Adam if we see something we really just speak to the people around us our family and friends and say please do not view this and and here are the reasons why what do you say to a young couple they're they they're basically you know doing the they're living the christian life they they they're doing every they're checking all the boxes as a christian but yet they view this as a form of entertainment and it's something they can do as couples it's something they do to get together they look forward to it it's something new refreshing whatever exciting what do you say to that well two things the one that we said before the break and that is if you think it through you are either fooling yourself and there's nothing there that you're recording or experiencing that's supernatural or you're interacting with demons because no figure from heaven or in purgatory is going to come and draw you into mortal sin and when you turn to these spirits for either comfort information or power which if you think it through is what the three things that people are pursuing with paranormal investigating you're looking for that excitement but really you're looking for an experience of the spiritual proof that there's a spiritual world proof that there's an afterlife maybe a connection with your dead relative that you want to have closure with these type of things the type of stuff that psychic mediums sell so there's not going to be a figure in heaven or purgatory that's going to help you do that you're going to be interacting with demons or your own imagination secondly the paranormal professionals quote unquote because there is no such profession there's no licensing for this type of stuff um, a lot of those people in the early years of the paranormal craze Deb I knew them personally I would met them at conferences I used to speak at paranormal conferences to warn people about the dangers of the paranormal and of ghost hunting and so I would meet these people and here's the the kind of you know dirty laundry of that world is that just about all of them had serious fallout in their lives of a spiritual nature that came from doing this type of work and making TV shows about it. But that doesn't sell advertising dollars. That does not attract viewers. And so Hollywood keeps that out of what is shown on the screen. But Adam, did those people, did they link the, the fallout that they suffered? Did they link it to their past of what they did and they what oh, they dabbled in? 100%. Okay. For them, it, it wasn't their past. It, it's what they were currently act, participating okay. in at that time. Yeah, 100 percent. They, they knew it was. And, you know, innumerable paranormal investigators have called us and said, you know, I went to this. I was ghost hunting. I came home and stuff started manifesting in my home. I'm terrified. You know, come over right. here and get rid of it, essentially. Okay, so let's go. I, I use the example of this young couple that uh, this is a form of entertainment for them. And then you are going to share some details about, um, um, I think, a couple that you knew of. Um, mm -hmm. what, what happened to them? Can you share the details? And, and, and be really like, go down to the, the, the very uh, focused um, 
situation that put him in that predicament? Because here's what I I think is a problem is so many of the young folks will say stuff like, well, that's not going to happen to me. I don't do, I don't do it for that reason. Or I'm just sitting Mm -hmm. there turning on the TV set. I'm fine. I'm in my home. You know, they, they kind of, they kind of dismiss it saying, well, that doesn't pertain to me. If there's something, if there's a, if there's a certain detail that you can share with us, that can really be something that people can latch onto and go, okay, I get it now. This is, this is something. Okay. So, so this is a, a case that I was called to consult on by a diocese many years ago now. Um, young couple, late 20s or early 30s, I don't know, I don't recall exactly their, their age, but late 20s, early 30s. Um, man and a woman, no kids. They had gotten involved in ghost hunting, paranormal investigating. They joined a little group in their town, in their city, and mostly younger people were in this group and they went on a number of ghost hunts they went on a ghost hunt to a building or a a house actually where a person who was a pedophile had hung themselves in the stairway stairwell of the house and the woman went to that particular spot in the house didn't use a, a digital recorder or some kind of you know um the modern gadgets that people use she simply intentionally opened herself up emotionally mentally completely to whatever might be there and asked it to interact with her or communicate with her she described later after all the prayer was over that what she had felt at that time was something rush into her she immediately lost the ability to express all emotion with her face which that's a lack of prosody for the mental health people out there Um, she sadly and disturbingly developed a fixation on a 16 year old boy who was one of the members of the paranormal group and started having fantasies about having an affair with him. She started hearing a voice in her mind, talking to her and telling her that he was with her now and would stay with her. And she had asked him to be with her and that he was going to be with her forever. And she found her personality started changing more and more over the days and weeks. The husband was terrified. The wife was terrified, but she couldn't express it. She couldn't express any emotion. She kind of had a blank look on her face. She'd walk around kind of staring blankly. So anyway, I went to the house, um, had my little bag with my prayer book in it and some holy water to evaluate mainly the situation. When I came in, the husband was greeted me and said his wife had fled to the upper stories of the house and into the attic of the house five minutes before I knocked on the door, before I had pulled up. And she had said, he's here, he's here, he's coming. And it fled upstairs. Um, we were talking in the kitchen. She was she peeked around the corner, kind of around um, from the stairway that led upstairs, looking at me, and then eventually came in. You know, I invited her to come in and said, you know, I'm not not wishing you any harm it's fine you can come and sit and talk with us and we she was able to talk a little bit and she kept staring at the bag i had with me and she kept saying he wants to know what's in the bag he wants to know what's in the bag he's afraid of what's in the bag and and in the bag was you know my prayer book and and some holy water and a crucifix so anyway um ended up praying essentially the litany of the saints which is what I often use when praying for somebody who might be troubled or seems to be troubled. And after about 15 minutes, um, there was a moment where there was like something snapped and she immediately burst into tears, let out a loud yell of joy and threw her arms around her husband's neck and hugged him and started sobbing and saying she was sorry to him over and over um, in joyful tears. (laughs) She said that he was gone, the voice had stopped, though it had been yelling at her to get away, to get away, Mm -hmm. run Mm -hmm. away, while the prayers were going on, and that he was gone. There was silence, she was able to express herself, she no longer had um, kind of disordered thoughts about the young man, and the couple told me that they were done with ghost hunting, and they were putting everything in a garbage bag that would be on the... Uh, front porch for the trash men to take it the next day. Wow. So this is not entertainment. This is very dangerous and it can, it can open up so many things. And that's why we're trying to get the word out. I mean, people, 
please don't use your your spare time, your your leisure time uh, viewing stuff like this. Take in God godly stuff. Take in good stuff, stuff that's going to to help you spiritually in your in your soul, rather than this kind of uh, entertainment. This is this isn't entertainment. This is this is a a path to destruction based on what you just shared, Adam, and what I just experienced in my brief encounter, just hearing the stories of how young, young folks are spending their time doing this. What happened to going out and, and taking a walk or, or playing sports, you know, that much better use of entertainment. Okay. Uh, that that's it for the next right thing. We're just super excited and can't wait to see everybody in Dallas tomorrow.